Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today we're going to be looking at how to remove the gap from front teeth. Now I was asked recently, how do I get rid of the gap in my front teeth so that I can see what I might look like without the gap there? Now I have this picture. It might be a little bit gruesome to some, but I downloaded this picture of someone that had a gap in their teeth. And you can see here that I've kind of fixed it up and if you look at my history, this is kind of how I went about the process of doing that. Let's go ahead and go to the very beginning of the history and click on the front of this so that you can see that is what I started with. This is the same picture. I just went in and I copied some things and moved some things around. Let's go ahead and go back one more time. Let's take a look at this. There is the final product. So let's start out by going to where I started here, and that is the front teeth here. Now let's get rid of the undo history and I'm going to start with my crop tool because I want to crop and just get the teeth just for the purposes of this tutorial. And there we go. There we have the teeth with the gap. Now what we need to do is we need to get a copy of this tooth, put it on a new layer, and then move that around and do some blending. So what I chose is if you go four, five, six, seven, eight, eight tools down, make sure that this says quick selection tool when you hover over it. Click on this and we can select using the selection tool here and I can grab the tooth. Now you can see it picked up a whole lot more than the tooth. So if we choose the minus, which is right here, subtract from selection, and we kind of click on these areas right here, we can do a better job of getting just the tooth selected. So there we go. I'm trying to do my best to wipe out all the rest of this. You can see that there's some marching ants down here that we want to get rid of and maybe just a little bit uh, of adding here. So didn't do a real great job. If I wanted to refine my edge I could click on this piece right here and do a little bit of smoothing on this and if I wanted to see what it looked like there there's what it looks like there but I could feather it just a tiny bit and maybe do some uh, expanding or contracting on this. Now when I'm happy with what it is that I want to select, I select OK and there are my marching ants now. We're going to do the Control J or the Command J if you're on a Mac and that is the jump screen and that just means that whatever was in the marching ants jumps onto a new layer and there we have it. Let's turn the eyeball off on this background layer and you can see that we have the two selected. There it is. Now, you cannot see that we have this two selected on a new layer until you choose the move tool, which is right here. And I'm going to use my arrow keys it's a little bit easier. I'm going to move it about halfway in between the gap on the tooth. Now, in and of itself, let's get rid of the bounding box by unchecking this it doesn't look very real because you can see the tooth underneath it. So we're going to have to do a little bit of blending with this. And how we do the blending is all through the layers palette. So let's go ahead and go to the layers palette, choose the black and white to cookie tool which is an adjustment layer. And it doesn't really matter what you choose but I like to choose levels because we're really not going to do anything with this. Once we have our levels selected up here we need to reorder this and I need to put this tooth by itself I need to put it above the adjustment layer alright so what we did was we selected with the selection tool we did a control J to make a new layer here and then what we did was we created an adjustment layer a levels adjustment layer alright now if you hold down the option or the alt key you can see that a little funny squiggly 8 comes up with a little arrow and if you click in between the two arrows this moves over to the right. What that does is it allows us to put a little gradient in here to blend from one tooth to another. Now I'm going to select over here. You don't have to worry because I'm going to do this a second time on the tooth and you can always rewind in YouTube. So I'm going to click this gradient tool and I'm going to make sure that I have this white box selected and I'm going to create a gradient from one tooth to the other tooth. So we're just going to start over here 
and we're going to drag it across the tooth like that. That doesn't work too well. Let's go ahead and drag it the other way. Yikes! Make sure that you are on the Levels tab. That is a real good thing there. And there we go. And so it kind of blended all of this in there by doing that. It blended from the front tooth to the back tooth, so it's kind of magic there. Now let's go back down, and we're going to do this a second time. That was a little bit quick, so I'm going to go back to my background layer, and we're going to do it to the second tooth here. Click on your selection tool, and select the tooth. There we go. There's the first part of this, maybe a little bit uh, more there. Go to your selection tool and get the subtract and really refine your edge. Do the best you can to just get the tooth and nothing but the tooth. <laughs> anyway, there's the tooth. Okay, so we've got this. If you wanted to refine the edge, you could do that and refine the edge. Now, how did we get this tooth on a new layer by itself? That's right, we did the Command J or the Control J, and as you can see, that right hand tooth came up here. Now, or right here actually. The next thing that we did was went, we went to the black and white cookie tool, right? And we created a new layer. So let's go ahead and do that again. And we created a levels adjustment layer. Now once again, we have to reorder these items. The tooth must be above the levels. So let's go ahead and click on that and drag this above there. The next thing that we did was we held the Alt key down and then we pointed it in between these two layers and we clicked and it scooted this picture of the tooth over. The very final thing that we did was we added a gradient inside this box by going down to the gradient tool, grabbing a hold of the tooth and then blending it. Now, uh, I did forget one step, we do have to move the tooth. So let's go ahead and undo that for a second. I have to scoot the tooth over a little bit. Sorry about that. Messing you up on this. And then hold the Option key down and click there and you can see that does a number right here. Click on the Levels, which is right here, and add a gradient. I know this sounds like a lot. I'm going to put it in the description here. I'm going to go and create a gradient in between there. That didn't work. So let's go ahead and do this again. I keep forgetting which side to start on. You start on the inside and you go to the outside and there we go. So now what we have is we have the teeth and we've kind of blended them. If you look over here under the layers we have a tooth and we've blended that using a gradient layer adjustment layer and we had the other tooth and we blended that one as well. So there are there's our fixed teeth. Then what we have to do is we have to go in here and you can see that there are a little bit of doubles that are in here. So in order to get rid of that, we must come over here under the healing brush tool, which is right there. And then we need to flatten our layers. So let's go ahead and flatten our image. The way that the healing brush works, of course, is you hold the Alt key down to pick a good area of the tooth and then you just do some painting and it gets rid of some of those double areas. Now of course this is just for reference so that you can see what you might look like with without a gap in your teeth. So that was the question and this is my answer to that. What you would do is you would create new layers and you would go in here and that's probably not what you would do but you would go in here and you would kind of clean this area up right here of any kind of double images, kind of weird looking reflections, and that's it right there. So here's a way that you can see what you would look like without the gap in your teeth. I hope this helped. I'm going to go ahead and put the description. I know there's a lot of instructions on here on being able to blend this, and it is one of the more difficult things to do. So I'm going to go add this in the description. Have fun. This is Chucky from Digital Goulash, and I will catch you around.